What's up everyone? I uh, just want to give you a quick update. I'm leaving the shop right now, but the Chalk 335, we are going to try to make the dyno tomorrow. Um, I'll be going to the same place that I took the X3M Black Dog Speed Shop. They have an all-wheel drive dyno there. Uh, we're going to try to rent it out and get this thing dialed in. Um, let me know if you guys want me to make a video on uh, those of you that are running built motors and are having uh, knock issues. Uh, we got something that we run here. They're uh, trim pots, which you wire into your uh, DME, basically bank one and two um, knock sensors. So if you wanna see how we override that, let me know. I'll make a video, a detailed video on that. But the plan is to get this thing to the dyno I did have to make a last minute order, nothing major, just something small. Um, as you guys know, I have that water meth kit uh, installed. Um, although the tank is dry, we did that, that first run uh, where we just put distilled water through it, uh, made sure that it was working fine. Obviously there's like little bits of tiny, you know, water residue in the tank. Uh, and I noticed uh, while the engine was running after you turn it off that there's like a hissing sound coming from the charge pipe and i noticed that it's actually the water that is trying to get siphoned into the motor while the engine is off via vacuum reference um so as you can see i have at the bottom of my charge pipe right there is where i have the water meth nozzle hooked up and it seems like that is sitting lower than the tank the tank on this car, uh, you guys saw when I installed it, I have it right up there. So having the tank higher than your uh, injection point on the charge pipe uh, can cause you to hydrolock, destroy your engine um, because when the vehicle is off, there's still vacuum in the motor or in the charge pipe. And what it will happen is let's say you have uh, half a tank or whatever even if there's even a little bit of, of water meth in your tank uh that's going to get sucked through into your charge pipe fill your charge pipe up with water and then when you go to start your car all that water is going to go into your intake manifold through your engine and it's not going to be pretty so um i ordered through summit racing the solenoid valve you can get a check valve as well that will work but it's made for the aem so i'll either place it it's a one-way check valve that I'll place either right before it goes into the charge pipe or I'll place it somewhere in the rear. It has a obviously directional flow. So I may put it right here and then that way it will prevent you from siphoning water or methanol into your system while the vehicle is off and destroying your built motor or stock motor, whatever you're running meth on. So I'm going to do that. That should be arriving i did get it shipped next day air morning so hopefully we get that in the morning and then hopefully by the afternoon like two three if the streets are clean because we just did get some snow here um, then i'll be able to get the car over and we can throw it on the dyno and see what she makes so that's the update with that car um the trunk is still getting painted and that's pretty much it but let me know if you guys want to Want a video, a detailed video on the trim pots that we use to bypass uh, the cylinder knock that you get with built motors. I know that a few people have run into that issue and it's a really easy fix. Um, so there's that. Um, other than that, we got a few cars we're working on. My boy, that red 135 doing his thing with the 1M conversion. It's all right, you know looks pretty and everything but still gonna get gapped by the by the xi you already know that too don't forget it uh this car here i know uh Jaime, you're probably watching this video we're pretty much done with your low pressure install uh just finishing uh, running the line up to your charge pipe for the uh secondary pump for the hop switch so we've got all your wires neatly run along this main harness that's already in the trunk. Your pump's already in, so that's that. Um, and then I'll be diagnosing the car tomorrow. No cr or cranks, but no start, so I gotta get that in. 
Uh, but other than that, just a quick little update. Uh, I'm waiting for the block to come back for that car, hopefully by tomorrow. And that's actually gonna be the next thing I do is uh, assemble that motor. Then we have Dylan's motor over there, which is waiting for us to do timing and head work on, or place the head on the, on the motor. Other than that, we're good. So like I said, hopefully tomorrow afternoon, she sees the dyno. If not, like I said, we're not gonna rush it. We still have time. Uh, whenever that part comes in that we're waiting on that solenoid, then we'll get it over. Maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, we'll see. But we'll leave it at this. Just a quick update, little video. And a FYI for you guys running water meth, uh, to take that into consideration, I have seen quite a few guys hydrolock their motors because of that issue. So keep that in mind. We'll leave it at that. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Later. So here's what we're dealing with. A bunch of snow on the ground. So hopefully by tomorrow, this is all cleared up. Uh, so we can get the car to the dyno. But in case any of you are wondering on Project 335, uh, she's been a great daily. Uh, right now, I'm still planning on doing the full overhaul on the suspension. But um, due to the build that we're getting ready for Texas, obviously this has been put on hold. But once we get back from Texas, uh, we'll probably continue because the suspension is pretty bad on this car. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's been great. Uh, there's no more coolant leak. We fixed that. We had a leaky water pump. Other than that, uh, she's been driving amazing. So, yeah. Um, I really, uh, earlier today, um, before it started snowing, the roads were dry. Some of you may have seen my post on N54 Tech. Um, me and Fong were able to raise the, the limiter on the Chalk 335 car. So we're revving out to like 8, 8K now. And I'm gonna try to put it in this video. Um, it was filmed vertically, so I don't know how it's gonna look, but um, I'm sure the video is not gonna do it justice. That thing at 8,000 RPM was just screaming. I mean, it was like a life-changing event for me. It, it was just so nice and just powered right through all the way to 8K. No hiccups, no misfire, nothing. Just kept pulling. And mind you, we're still on wastegate base map, so um, it's gonna be interesting. You know, uh, we probably won't be needing. I mean, I want to do 40 pounds, but if we're revving out to 8K, realistically, we don't need 40 pounds of boost. You know, we'll make more power because we have that extra RPM. Um, so we'll see how it goes. You know, at the dyno, but um, we'll we'll try 30 pounds, see what she does on 30 pounds, and you know. We'll, we'll we'll play it by ear but i know the motor can take it that's that's not an issue at all you know but we'll see um here i'll put the clip in right now so you guys can hear uh what this thing sounds like Anyways, just wanted to to give you guys another update on this Project 335, so that's all.